Hello everyone and welcome to the Anime Daily and thank you for joining me as we talk about chapter 175 of the We Never Learn manga series. A truly brilliant chapter showing off some good character uh, development, great story writing and some good foreshadowing that was links back to the first chapter of this route. And honestly, this probably is one of my favourite chapters simply because it brings a different vibe and a different mood to the overall feel of the chapter itself. It was a bit shorter than most, being 19 uh, pages long, but at the same time, it was a very, very effective chapter, nevertheless. So, let's dive into it and let's talk about all things great. So, I think I'll start off by talking about Azami's father. And this character kind of gets a bit more of a spotlight in this chapter, even though he had some time to shine in the previous one. I love the determination on display from this character in trying to save Nariyuki towards the end. This man, Azumi's father, he's performing surgery or trying to perform surgery with a broken arm. Yes, you heard me correctly. He broke his arm and he's still trying his hardest to perform this type of action. And I loved that. Seeing this determination on this character was brilliant. But this determination could spring from one of two places, if not both. First situation, this character has a lot of overall pride and care for being a doctor. You know, he wants all of his patients to be happy. He wants to take care of everybody because he is a doctor and that is his duty. This character has always done the best for any and all of his patients and just wants to help Narayuki in this position. This seems like a logical choice and makes logical sense, but at the same time, let's look at another reason. So reason number two, this determination could stem from desperation and guilt. He is fearful of a repeat situation in regard to not being able to save a member of the Narayuki household. And we can support this kind of idea of him being desperate and guilty and fearful with one line that he definitely says in this chapter, which is, how will I ever face uh, Takaruki, Naruki's father basically, in the afterlife? He's there going, I'm the only one on this island that can, that can do this. Your mother is away. Um, you know, no one else is a doctor on this island. Only me can do this. And, you know... Fair play to the character, he earned a lot of credit points and a lot of respect. I, I've already loved this character from the start, but this chapter just makes me appreciate his character all that much more. Plus, when he's dived in to save Nariyuki, that generally shocked me while I was reading. I honestly never thought I was going to see that happening. I thought that maybe Azumi might jump in or somebody else, not this character. But nevertheless, I love that. All in all, a great display slash writing for this character in this chapter. So next up, let's talk about the guy lying on the hospital bed. That's right, Narayuki. This guy literally raised his own death flag by asking Azumi to let him tell her how he feels about her if they make it back safely. Now, fair play to Narayuki, he definitely earned some points in terms of respect in this chapter because this guy doesn't know how to swim and yet he would gladly risk his own life for his own students. And I mentioned in my last review that this character has a little bit of a self-destructive tendency. He'll happy do, happily do anything and everything to help out somebody else, even if that means putting himself in danger. And this destructiveness plays a role at the end of this chapter, which ultimately gives us this current predicament. Nevertheless though, not a Yuki in this chapter, he was very respectable and I just overall loved the way they presented him. I thought his character was showcased in a great light and it helped move the plot forward, which, okay, this was somewhat kind of predictable because I said in my last review that, you know, Nadayuki's going to get in trouble, Azumi's going to have to save him, um, you know, somewhere along those lines. And here we are in a situation like this. But the key thing is, although this is a little bit predictable, it's still very, very entertaining. Now, let's move along to Azumi herself. So, Azumi. This chapter gives us some great facial expressions from Azumi's character, but also builds around the kind of feelings of trust and determination. 
Obviously, I've spoken about determination in her father. When it comes to Nadayuki, she comes in at trust. This works to kind of motivate and develop Azumi's character, as Nadayuki trusts Azumi to heal him if anything ever went wrong with him. And of course it did. And this in turn gives Azumi a confidence slash motivational boost to kind of step up to the plate and perform the surgery herself. She had never done this before, so she has this kind of fear and anxiety and kind of nerves about her in doing so. But she's willing to put that trust that Narayuki has in her to good use and help him in his time of need. But the question I have is though, was Azumi upset or annoyed at herself after hearing Narayuki state that he must save those kids because of his duty as a teacher? Now, looking at this kind of expression right here and the way she reacted afterwards by stating, it's also my job as a doctor to help people, it kind of proves that she might be. But this acts as though like she was upset at herself more so than being mad at Nanayuki. I don't think she had any intention of being angry at him. That's not what I'm getting at. The fact is, she in two cases throughout this chapter possessed fear. And this fear that she possessed was 100% understandable when looking at the situations in what she was in. Would you, you as a viewer, be able to jump into a dangerous storm to save some kids? And would you, as a villa, as a villa, as a viewer, be able to be in a surgical situation where you had to perform surgery on the person you have feelings for with their life in the balance and it being your first time? Again, these are situations that Azami has been thrown in and yet her fear is very understandable because it's a theme that runs throughout the chapter. She gets into a situation, she's hesitant, she's a bit of fearful about doing so. Although, she must do this and overcome the fear. And it links to her development because she does, in fact, come over that fear in a brilliant manner and light. And I actually really do appreciate it. I found the different stages of fear and realisation from Azumi's character being shown uh, during the surgical section to be very telling as the chapter gives a unique way of showing off Azumi's emotions because we can only see her eyes and like the kind of top half of her face because she's covered by a mask and obviously like the overall kind of uniform. But then we have the inner uh, mixture of inner monologues and expressions. And again, these come from the eyes, which work really brilliantly because it shows that when she's bewildered, it shows when she's over kind of in her depth and it shows when she's determined. We always hear the phrase having a light lit within their eyes or something and that kind of works here because we see that fire burning in Azumi's eyes as she steps up and says I'll do that surgery. So overall Azumi's character was just great because she showed off a lot of kind of good themes, good kind of development and it all kind of came together nicely at the end. Plus what was it about good story writing I said at the beginning of this video? Well what did Nadayuki have to help Azumi with at the start of this route? If you remember rightly, that's it. They had to help with surgical stitching. Azumi was super bad at stitching, but then she asked Nadayuki for help because he's so good at it, and thus she started to improve. And I love the fact that they helped show off at the beginning of the route Nadayuki kind of helping Azumi grow in terms of her doctor role, and then that in turn needing to be put into practice in helping Nadayuki's life. I think that is really good story writing and great foreshadowment that the chapter has kind of brought with it. So big thumbs up for that. Overall, I really thought this chapter was a great chapter with a total different vibe. That's right, I said at the beginning of this video that this chapter carried a different vibe slash mood with it and we do get that mood shift. This chapter is a more serious chapter it has that tone of like seriousness with the kids being in danger and Nadayuki now being in a very fatal condition. But our protagonist has complete faith in Azumi Koenami. The question is though, do you have faith in Azumi? Do you think she'll pull through and help Nadayuki out and save his life? Only time will tell. We have some brilliant art style, great plot progression and character development which is always a thumbs up from me because I love those two type of things. Personally, 
I think this is the best arc for storytelling so far. That's right, I do think that storytelling wise it's better than the Azumi, uh, not Azumi because we're in the Azumi, the Furuhashi, Rizu and Uruka route. All that's left is the Kurisu route but to be honest I am enjoying myself and loving every second of this route so far and I can't wait to see how this route moves forward in the next few chapters. So like the video if you liked the video, subscribe if you're new for more weekly manga and anime content from myself and as always let me know your thoughts and predictions down in the comment section below and have a great day. Aligator, Martinet, goodbye.